Judith Rose Viorst, during your prolific career and with your characteristic wit and wisdom, you have taken us with you on your journey from young life to middle age and beyond. Through your impressive body of work, you have helped us to negotiate marriage, parenting, careers, losses, and the fine art of aging. For this, Goucher College is honored to present to you today the degree of Doctor of Letters, Honoris Causa. By the authority of the state of Maryland, vested in the trustees of Goucher College and by them delegated to me, I confer on Judith Rose Viorst the degree of Doctor of Letters Honoris Causa with all the rights, privileges, and responsibilities pertaining thereto. We'll be very happy now to hear from our principal commencement speaker, Judith Fjorst. Well, that was pretty thrilling. <laughs> I am grateful, delighted, and really honored to receive this honorary degree from Goucher, and I will treasure it. So now I want to congratulate all of you, and also you're thrilled, and perhaps relieved parents, on your graduation today from Goucher. I think it's fair to say that you are now officially grown-ups, which means, among other things, that you now have the wonderful opportunity to look for and find yourself a paying job, to feed and clothe and house and take care of yourself, and most important of all, to make absolutely sure that you've got health insurance. Many of you will eventually marry, many of you will have children of your own, and some of you, by the time you have reached my age, will be close to paying off your student loans. <laughs> um, I have the uneasy feeling that, like commencement speakers everywhere these days, I'm obliged to make some dumb joke about student loans. I also, like commencement speakers everywhere, feel obliged to provide some guidance, some inspiration, to offer a few noble principles for you to take on this next stage of your journey. But along with those high-minded principles, there are some others I'd like to offer. Ordinary, plain, mundane, every day. Some low-key thoughts and suggestions that in their plain, mundane, low-key way might in the course of your life turn out to be helpful. So I'm going to start with a list of exhortations that I guess you could call a mashup, a mashup of the ridiculous and the sublime. So here it goes. Don't slouch. Don't mumble. Help the needy. To thine own self be true. Never give up on poetry. Floss now or be sorry later. <laughs> and always do what you have promised to do. Check your moles once a year with a dermatologist. <laughs> Order the fresh green salad instead of the fries. Remember that moral behavior means doing what's right when no one is looking, and that peeing before a long car trip is always wise. <laughs> also, it never hurts to pay a compliment. No gloating when you win, no tears in defeat. Try to avoid washing dark and light laundry together. And, and wipe between your toes while you're drying your feet. Never take credit when you haven't earned it. Change your underwear every day without fail. And when you're writing your thank you notes for all those nice graduation presents you're getting, write them by hand and send them by regular mail. You know. <laughs> I'm, I'm sure you've probably heard most of this already, but a reminder like a compliment never hurts. And that's why I've decided to remind you of something else that you, that all of us need to remember. Life isn't fair. No, life isn't fair. 
We won't always get what we want, what we need, what we're owed, what we so richly deserve. And shrewdly, though we may plan for every contingency, we are inescapably destined to have some terrible, horrible, no good, very bad days. Most of us do not naturally or enthusiastically rise to such occasions, chuckling merrily at these little disturbances of man or philosophically murmuring, that's life. Instead, what we do when we have a bad day is we sulk, we brood, we holler, we complain. Sometimes we go all cosmic and decide we're the victim of a malignant universe a universe that has singled us out, us and us alone, to make our life hell. A little paranoid, a little self-important, you bet. Like that Alexander character I once wrote about in a book, we take our bad days, and I'm not talking tragedy here, I'm talking bad days, we take them maybe too seriously. So what kinds of words of wisdom can I offer you about dealing with bad days? Well, the first would absolutely be to laugh. Right, laugh. Go on, give it a try. Try to laugh. It's surely one of life's best coping mechanisms, putting our aggravations and irritations into perspective and helping us to think it could be worse and even tomorrow will be better. But if there's nothing the slightest bit amusing about your bad day, if funny simply isn't one of the options, my other recommendation in the face of life's minor mishaps is get over it. <laughs> you can do this. You can decide to get over it. Though you want what you want when you want it, though some undeserving so-and-so got it instead, though it rained on your parade despite the fact that the weather channel swore it wouldn't, you are not the only human being in your house, your city, your state, your entire solar system to whom bad things happen or are going to happen. Bad things happen to everyone. Get over it. Now, get over it works okay when the problem you're dealing with is a bad day, but more is needed in a bad situation. When your work life or love life or social life or whatever life you've got going isn't going too well. When the obstacles you're faced with seem insurmountable and what you are sorely tempted to do is run. But grown-ups, and remember, you're officially a grown-up, don't cut and run. Instead, you put in the time, the sweat, the effort, and the patience to try to turn this bad situation around. And when you've tried your hardest and nonetheless failed, you give it another shot. You persist. I'm, I'm going to say a few words in praise of persistence. Cultivate persistence. It's a good quality, one worthy of our admiration and praise. Persistence means hanging in there, hanging in there long enough so you'll solve the problem, mend what was broken, remove the obstacle, change the odds, eventually make a bad situation better. A philosopher once said that freedom is the recognition of necessity, a formulation that I have always loved. What it means, as I understand, is, is if, as you're making your journey through life, if you encounter a stone wall that's blocking your way, you must recognize its stone walledness, that's the necessity part, and not go fruitlessly banging your head against it. But it also means that this is the freedom part, if you climb over it, walk around it, dig a hole under it, demolish it, or find a new path to where you want to go. You persist. In fact, I'd like to remind you that the great immovable wall of our recent history, the Berlin Wall, turned out to be far more movable than we had dreamed. Thousands of individuals stubbornly, persistently saying no, finally succeeded in bringing that wall down. Now look, it's, it's certainly true you can overdo persistence, staying far too long in a dead-end job trying to revive a rotten relationship, or like Captain Ahab in Melville's novel Moby Dick, chasing that white whale until it kills you. There are certainly times when the right thing to do is simply to say, I quit, it's over, it's done, enough already. 
But as you leave here and begin to do what you are hoping to do, as you're working at trying to make your dreams come true, I'd like to ask you to consider, take a look back and consider that song your mom told you, sang to you long ago about the itsy bitsy spider. <laughs> that spider who climbed up the water spout and got washed down the spout by the rain. Then waited until the sun came out and climbed up the spout again. And when the rain washed him down again, climbed up the spout again and again and again. That spider knew persistence. And that, I think, was your first lesson to be a grown-up who persists. But um, I, I need to um, back up a little here and say that um, I don't want to uh, have you think that being a grown-up um, is uh, like some turkey. Uh, we roast for X number of hours, then we take it out of the oven and declare it's done to perfection. A grown-up is always, always a work in progress, and growing up is a process which, if we're lucky, will continue throughout our life. What's going to help us in the growing up process, what's going to help all of you here, is the knowledge that you put into your heads during your years at Goucher. Some of it may be cl clearly useful right now. A lot of it, you know, you're going to wondering, what are we ever going to do with this weird assortment of facts that lurk in your brain? The, the date of some famous battle, perhaps, or the difference between metamorphic and igneous rock. But don't be surprised to find that what you've learned keeps popping up in the oddest ways, popping up out of the blue when you least expect it. And don't be surprised at how useful and wonderful and satisfying it is. <coughs> and speaking of useful, it's now time for another list from me that just might be worth considering as you put in the lifelong work of growing up. Here are some thoughts. <coughs> Becoming a grown-up means learning that in some ways you're rare and unique, and in some ways you're exactly like everyone else. Becoming a grown-up means learning that you'll never, ever be everyone's cup of tea. That hard though you may try and utterly beguiling though you may be, not everyone you meet is going to love you or like you or even be able to stand you. <laughs> Becoming a grown-up means understanding when really bad things happen that the answer to why me is why not me. And becoming a grown-up means learning, often the hard way, that you're never too old to do something utterly stupid, that you're never too old to make a damn fool of yourself, the only um, difference being that as you become more and more of a grown-up, you get over the embarrassment, the utter humiliation, a lot faster. <coughs> I also need to say that although your life is, of course, about you, it's never and never should be just about you. And that the golden rule, do unto others as you would have them do unto you, remains the best guide and standard you'll ever have. And that over the years, you will only grow older without ever growing up, unless you connect and contribute to the world that lies beyond your private concerns. Now, from what I've heard about the kinds of young men and women who decide to come to Goucher, this is not new news. You already know this. But let me repeat it anyway. You need to connect and contribute to the world that lies beyond your private concerns to make it less of a mess, a little bit better. You need to find some space in your life to fix, to try to fix this needy world. <coughs> Give me a minute, I'm going to cough. <coughs> For to live a private life, uninvolved and uninvested in the larger community, cheats not just that community, but yourself. It's children. Children who think that giving is giving up, is giving away, is losing something. <laughs> Grown-ups understand that giving is getting. Well, my time is running out, and I just have a few more major and minor thoughts to leave you with, like learn to say, I'm sorry, it won't kill you. 
always carry your fair share of the load. You're likely to learn more by listening than by talking. Stay in touch with your folks when you're on the road. What are your house plans if you want to have house plans? <laughs> Don't ever unnecessarily cause pain. Leave yourself at least an hour more than you think you need, and maybe the next time you won't miss the plane. <laughs> Aim high, strive hard, pursue your dearest dreams, while understanding that neither you, nor the people you love, nor the life that you achieve has to be perfect or anywhere close to perfect in order for you, your loved ones, your life to be wonderful. There's a poet I adore, a poet, a singer, a songwriter named Leonard Cohen, who wrote a song called Anthem, which has some words that speak to this theme of imperfection. It goes, ring the bells that still can ring. Forget your perfect offering. There is a crack, a crack in everything. That's how the light gets in. As, as I stand here looking at all of you official grown-ups, all you wonderful, promising works in progress, I can actually see all the light that's pouring in. And it's so much light, so much possibility. It's beautiful. So good luck to every one of you. Good luck and congratulations as you head into your imperfect, glorious future. <laughs>